Hello. Hi, Irene. Welcome. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Oh, All right. Good. I think we can get started. So we'll start off with a roll call attendance. I'm just going to go across my screen. Courtney Meyer. Here. Sharon Parsons. Here. Uh, Denise Barstow Mans. Here. Mary Carney. Here. Irene Costello. Here. And I, Diana West, am here. And Brianna Quinn told me she was not able to make it tonight. All right, our first order of business is to approve the minutes from October 24th, 2023, which I believe were distributed a couple weeks ago. Do I have a motion to accept? Yep. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, were there any additions, corrections, any questions? I didn't okay. see any. No, I've lost it. Okay, I think we can do a roll call vote again. Courtney Meyer? Yes. Mary Carney? Yes. Irene Costello? Yes. Jerry Parsons? Yes. Denise Barstow Mans? Yes. And I, Diana West, vote yes. So motion carries. Okay, old business, 101 East Street update if any available. So uh, I thought Cyrus was supposed to attend and give us an update. Uh, he's not here yet, so perhaps we can go back to that if he does show up. Sorry. Sorry, I'm getting over a cold. Oh, no. Okay. V1 Vodka CPA application. I had also invited uh, Paul Kozub to join us, but I hadn't heard back, so I'm guessing he's not coming. Uh, but if he does, perhaps he can provide more information. Uh, Mary there had reached out to me about providing more information about the preservation restriction. So Brianna and Denise had given me some information that I passed on to Paul and Mary. Denise recommended that the Massachusetts Historical Commission hold the restriction, which I think makes a lot of sense. I believe that's what happened with the one that was applied to the North Hadley Village Hall. They have more expertise than us on the topic. So that's why I think it makes more sense for them to hold it. Uh, <clears throat> does anybody have any questions or comments about preservation restriction or the V1 vodka pay application? Uh, well, uh, did the owner accept the restriction, the um, 20 year? Yes. From the town? <clears throat> From what I understand, he has accepted it and now uh, he's going through the process to apply for it. And um, everything that goes along with that. I think that's the step one before he can get any of the CPA funding. That's good. Yeah. Okay. You know, honestly, I think it was too bad that um, it, you know, had to be a 20 year. Um, how, how, how was that worded? There was for at first a five year restriction mm -hmm. and it ended up at 20 and I thought that was yeah you exactly. know it's we, we almost as a as the CPA we almost struck it completely because we didn't want people to be confused um but then we thought that maybe it would help him get get the um warrant article passed because people would be looking for that kind of payback um so it, we reduced it from 10 to 5, and then at the town meeting, they, you know, made it 20. So, yeah. I'm glad I, that he... I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no. I'm just... I'm with you. I think that we didn't even really need it um, because the preservation restriction is enough, and oftentimes towns don't do both the payback and the preservation restriction. Um, but, hey, it got passed, so... And he accepted it. When you think about it, it was rather risky to to bump it up to twenty because he could have just walked away and you know somebody I think yeah. somebody from the CPA said he you know he can paint it purple and take down the steeple, so um, you know anyway. I'm glad he um, I'm glad he's accepted it. It sort of shows good faith on his part to do that. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. 
and you know some of the comments at the town meeting also were a little um out there um i think one woman got up and said this is a church and state you know separation of church and state issue i was like oh for crying out loud yeah, she did. no Somebody it isn't no it's not a church anymore but anyway don't let me get on my soapbox because <laughs> I think our, there are other soapboxes for us to get on top of today. <laughs> Always. Okay. Any updates on the demolition delay bylaw research? Um, not really. Uh, we were planning on putting together more of a formal presentation, um, but we sort of ran out of time. Uh, Brianna was taking the lead on that. Um, <clears throat> but um, we will continue on that and uh, hopefully have more information um, for the next meeting. Um, Irene, I know you sent me an email with uh, some more questions and thoughts. I don't know if you want to um, touch upon those at all. Sure. I, I guess I was um, not clear on how this bylaw, the demolition bylaw, um, need and if there's a sense of urgency how the sense of urgency has come about um, because some of the research I've done on the Mass Historical Commission site there are a lot of resources out there for towns to um, put in place preservation plans and there are many tools that you can <laughs> use and this is one of them but not necessarily the only one. And I think before, um, you know, uh, Courtney and, and Brianna and I go off and just come up with a document that, you know, eventually has to go up the decision-making chain, we as a group understand what this is supposed to do, what the other tools are that we, can, can be used. It's not something that, you know, I've read that is anybody would, um, recommend you know trying to like just push through it has a lot of repercussions on it uh, it has to go to a town vote and there it's going to require a lot of education and communication and getting buy-in from all the interested parties um, in the town and especially the, you know those who would be affected by it so um, being new to the commission I guess it was just like I felt like I just kind of parachuted in here and boom you gotta you know come up with a bylaw for um you know uh, demolition and I I'm not I'm not quite there yet so um if somebody can enlighten me and you want to enlighten me offline that's fine I just as a business person I would approach this and actually I consider this as a sales opportunity you know, because we're selling an idea, um, I would step back and kind of think through a bigger plan. But then again, I don't know if this is something that's come up because there's some urgency and, you know, there's another need to just get it done. So um, I, I plead ignorance on that. You make really good points, Irene. Sorry. And definitely, there definitely needs to be a lot of education and communication around um, the concept of a demolition delay bylaw. I think from a, our perspective, there's been a lot of consternation around Russell School. Yeah. And um, I mean, we're going on a, a couple years in terms of when our journey started with trying to do something for Russell School. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you're pretty new to town, but like within my lifetime, we've torn down a few buildings right in the center of town that I think had historic significance. And there was nothing in place to stop that from happening. And um, there wasn't a strong enough voice from the town to stop it from happening either. So I definitely agree that we should explore all of our avenues and we should put together, you said, a sales pitch, a presentation, something, have some open forums with people. I think there is an interest in historic preservation. I just think 
<clears throat> people don't want it to cost money. Mm -hmm. And that's a big factor. And um, I mean, we've seen it down the road where people mourn things once they're already gone. Yeah. And so we, I mean, it's, it's up to us as the <clears throat> historical commission that we do do historic preservation. So <clears throat> while I do think there is urgency, I mean, I don't think they're going to bring in a wrecking ball tomorrow for Russell School or other historic buildings. But I think it is on the horizon. The very near horizon. And um, I mean, this should have been done decades ago, but I can't go in the past. I have to just look at the future. Right. <clears throat> so, I mean, whatever research we can come up with, whatever sales pitch we can make, um, I, you're absolutely right. This takes public opinion. It's going to take a two-thirds town meeting vote, ultimately. And, um, and we could look at it in different ways, such as publicly owned buildings versus privately owned buildings. Um, I mean, I'm going to talk about that letter we received that was specifically mm -hmm. directed about a privately owned home. They're upset had been very severely renovated. Uh, so, I mean, I don't think we need to rush this, but I mean, I would like to see major moves on it within the year. Mm -hmm. And within with it as along with other possible tools that could be used mm -hmm. to preserve you know, the um, integrity of the buildings and, and landscapes and et cetera. It's, yep. it's not just buildings. And you know, a question um, when you said it's the buildings were um, torn down in the middle of town is that along russell street and route nine which is zoned for business and a commercial tax base for the town yes so the two buildings i'm thinking of specifically are hooker school which was next to the goodwill memorial building and it is now stands the current library okay and the other one is the building that was referred to as the old gym which actually started life out as a horse barn for a um, Victorian style home that was where like that kind of a gazebo with the bell in it sits in front of Hopkins Academy. The old gym sat um, to the east of that, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's just a grassy area at this point. And what are they now? Uh, nothing. That's where the old gym sat. It's just a grass area and it's in a floodplain. So actually nothing can be built in that area as the current um, laws stand. And um, like I said, Hooker School, the new library is now there. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, because y y there's an inherent conflict, right? Be with anything that's existing on Route 9 where it, you know, that's zoned for business and industrial use. And how do you, uh, you know, how do you balance the use of or the preservation of a building that isn't suiting the purpose of a business owner? And I think I'm, you know, mentioning the, the East Street um, house that, you know, it's a home, a hundred year old home that ended up in a major thoroughfare of zoned business and it doesn't work as a property for commercial use. And we can, you know, I know that's going to be part of another conversation, but these are some of the things I'm also thinking about is you know, where does historical preservation and um, you know, saving these um buildings and i don't even know which ones they are i'm that new <laughs> um but there are a lot of buildings on route nine that you know i'm paying more attention to them and i was like yeah you know who cares if that gets torn down um maybe it should be and so you know just thinking through um the pros and the cons of our responsibility as a com historical commission and enacting some preservation 
tools, techniques, mm -hmm. plans, hopefully, you know, to end up being bylaws and the greater good of, you know, the town. And, and, and I certainly have heard many times and I can see all around me that this town doesn't like to pay for anything. So um, I, I get that. Okay, well, that is a good segue to go back to 101 E Street, but does anybody else have any more comments about the demolition delay bylaw at this time? Okay, welcome, Cyrus. I hear you might have an update for us about 101 E Street. Oh. Yeah, we've just been working with uh, Peter to... Um, <clears throat> uh, um, he like uh kind of he seemed a little more serious about actually trying to find a way to move this building and i put him in touch with our civil engineer so that's kind of where we're at so there's been some movement there but he wasn't getting much response he from randy who is his civil engineer and i guess there was just some question on whether like he needed the town's approval to split a property up. Mm -hmm. So, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, I thought that conversation was interesting from our standpoint too, because when we're discussing with our architect, it it seems like it would be almost in everyone's interest to to keep the the footprint and the structure that's there, and just add on to it. But there's just like all the laws in the you know, there needs to be 50, set, 50 foot setback from Route 9, 50 foot setback from um, uh, uh, East Street. Yep. And that's, that's like it, exactly where that house sits. So then it, it, it's it, like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it just comes in. Feet. Huh? It's not 50 feet back. No, I mean, it's actually, and it goes into Route 9 now because there was a Route 9 expansion. So, but but my point is, is like, I feel like, I mean, I feel like that corner would, I mean, the corner has kind of gone, everything on the corner has changed. Like you have mm -hmm. E Street and you have the post, I mean, you have e Bank ESB and you have the post office and now you have just the empty lot because they knocked down the, the mechanic that was there. But um, I mean, like, yeah. So like when I bring it up, they're just like, no, there's no way that they would. No, they're not going to go for this at all. I e the towel. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and then like, so we own that building, and and he did a pretty, he did a, an okay job of like renovating it, but but it 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 is decaying the building mm -hmm. itself. Like for example, the barn is like it's, it's dangerous to be in at this point so you know it's i mean it just can't sit there forever without some sort of improvement or something mm -hmm. um you know to you know i i don't know how how much how much longer can that i'm thinking of the barn and the the, the side like without you know much um and, you know, like, like it, it can last a certain amount of time, but without, you know, some, some concrete, like, uh, as you said, it's a hundred year old building. I think it just kind of needs, it would, it pretty much, we would just try to keep the shell mm -hmm. for what it is. I think our concern is more about the house, not the barn and the outbuildings. I know those are also historic, but it's clear that those are much further along in their decay as you said than the actual house is um <clears throat> i mean as we said before our goal would be to see the house saved i understand that that might not be the end result but from our perspective we at least need to do our due diligence to see if we can save the house it sounds like there is some good headway on peter's end if we, if somebody from the commission needs to go before the planning board or um, another board, please let us know. We're happy to do that and hopefully find a solution. Yeah, I think that, like, again, I think if we can, you know, if there can be um, some, some confidence on, that 
for 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 like our our like architect that there is a chance which we you know we we can't pursue with without them kind of like it like all of these people cost like you know for example hundreds of dollars per hour that they bill so mm -hmm. they come up with a plan and then if they're going to come up with a plan and the town is like no well then who pays for all that planning that was like instantly shot down was and and you know that that's kind of the response that, that i've gotten is like this is within setbacks so there's just no way you can do that mm -hmm. so if there was something from the town that's like hey well, this is an older building, and we'd be willing to make an exception. Um, you know, then maybe we could explore that option. I just don't know how to get to that point or have any. You know, I kind of just go from base on what I'm told, which they're like, these are the this is the this is the rules here. Mm -hmm. So, has the planning board already shot down the concept of adding on to the building, or are we just? basing that off of the current laws that exist it's just based off the current laws that it's it's okay. such an egregious violation of all the you know setbacks mm -hmm. you have to consider storm water because they don't want the you know they they like if you look at the building right in front of right next to it the the rock uh i mean the bike shop they like storm water in the front right there mm -hmm. like the the little drainage areas well I mean, I can send an email to Bill Dwyer and just feel out what he thinks. But I think that, as we've discussed, the best alternative would be to move the house off the property to give you the space to build your brand new building. Um, because I would agree that's, I think that's a harder, ro harder road for us to go down is to get those um, exceptions from the planning board and possibly... I don't know if the select board has to be involved and then um, the building inspector's office has to be involved, I would guess. So I'm, like I said, I can email Bill Dwyer. He is on the planning board. I'm not sure if he's still the chairperson or not. I can find out who the chair is and just see if that's even a possibility because you're right. I don't want you to spend all this money on plans that are just going to be immediately dismissed because they are um, not in compliance with our current laws. So how, that how, like how long has this been going on? When did you buy the property? And it's a dentist office or practice. Is that correct? Um, it's currently uh, just so we are we are like local dentists um, in the area. So we've owned the property for six months. And what was your time frame for being able to, you know, get operational? Um, we have, we, we, so we are, we currently have an office in Hadley. So there's, mm -hmm. we're not like, it's not like a super, uh, it's not like a super rush for us at the moment. Oh, okay. Uh, our current lease is up in 2029. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So we have time and, you know, it really benefits. My initial idea was was really, which I would love, and it would totally benefit kind of the practice as well to have that building, which is beautiful, right against the road right there, and have the driveway in on down on on East Street, like farther in the curb cut, um, but. You know, I kind of learned that that's not really what the option was. Um, and so then, um, you know, we had worked with someone from Berkshire Design and they came up with an initial plan to do it. And then, you know, this, you know, it's one of those things too that for me and my wife, and I'm one of the only pediatric dentists that's operating in our office is, is, is essentially become like a community health center. We're way too busy. There's, we don't have enough space. So we um, kind of, we, we did this feas feasibility study and we, we talked to Bill Dwyer and he's like, this is what you can do. 
talk to Berkshire Design. So we talked to Berkshire Design. They came up with a plan, which itself is like seven thousand dollars, and you they kind of propose, you know, this is where you put the building, this is where you put the parking, you know, you have your your open space requirement in Hadley, you have your setbacks, you have your green space requirements, you have your storm water. So come up with a plan, and then once that kind of checked out, you know, we bought the property, and I think we closed on it in June. So now it's being rented. It's it's always been rented to like undergrads or since Peter has renovated it to at UMass. So we're just continuing doing that for now. Okay, so I think next steps would be that I can get a feel from Buildwire um, about if we can add or if you can add on to the building. If that's a totally no go, then we continue on the road of hopefully moving the building either to an existing lot that Peter Schwartz right. owns, Which, or we look into so, how I mean, we I've, would do an auction. I've kind of done that as well. I, you know, which is like what I'm, what I'm kind of saying is Bill Dwyer essentially was like, these are the laws. So as long as it okay. follows these laws, you'll be fine. And so you don't think it's worthwhile for me to reach out to I, him? I, you think he's already I, answered those questions? I mean, I, I just don't exactly know how to proceed mm -hmm. because, um, yeah, essentially, like, Bill, I think, I, you know, some, I think it's a, it's a situation where here you have, like, we, we own this building and we, we've kind of, like, put everything we can into building this you know we can't go and buy a different piece of property right mm -hmm. like the down payment is two hundred thousand dollars so um we can't just go and buy a different one so in order to do that we had to we did a good amount of due diligence with bill and bill was like this is what this is um you know essentially setbacks um demolition is is probably what you you know what demolition is what has happened like across the street at fort bank esb and so you know that as long as it follows these you know few guidelines you sh you know you guys sh should be fine um to build you know, it just depends on parking and open space. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if, if you know, I don't, I just don't know how it works. Where it'd be like, hey, Bill, like, the, this is, this is a, this is a building we, we, you know, we have, um, as like, uh, for example, the historic commission is interested in preserving, um, the owner is interested in preserving the building structure, like let's, the main house. And, um, you know, is there, is, is the town open to granting, I guess they would be variances or exceptions to, to allow this to proceed in a way that you know the the current laws don't allow okay so i think like if there is if there is like because we haven't we haven't like approached bill and bill dwyer and said like hey 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 um you know we really really want to add on to this building like can you please 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 make it happen for us because bill was like follow this path so that's mm -hmm. the path we're following okay so I think that, you know, it can't hurt. I can just ask Bill. And if the answer is no, then we continue on the path that we're currently on that Peter Gelinas is working on. Does that sound like a good plan to you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, great. I don't know if Peter's familiar with Barry Roberts from Amherst. He's moved five 100-year-old buildings um, from Amherst 
um, to build a new building of his own. So he he knows the logistics of, of moving a building. One of them, he moved into Hadley, as a matter of fact, is by the nursing home. Yeah, I, I actually Cyrus reached out to Barry. asked him about it, and I asked him if he wants the house. <laughs> and he was like, absolutely not. Yeah. And he was like, I wouldn't do that unless I absolutely was forced into it. It's such a headache. Um, but he was very helpful. He's a really nice guy. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah, he was like, you know, if you guys are doing that, this is who you're going to use. Or you can talk to this person. So he gave me, you know, he'd get like an open door to reach out to if we, if we needed someone to do that. And then... Um, he he did give like a cost range, which was like three hundred thousand. Ah, can move but, it. Like, yeah, because you have to still build a foundation, I guess. Yeah, <clears throat> which is like the one in Hadley. So okay. Yeah. All right. I think we have. A plan for right. what we're going to do right now, and hopefully something will come to fruition. Yeah, I think maybe if we can put some, you know, just put it out there to Bill, like, hey, Bill, this is something we'd be interested. In. Like, all parties are on board um, to, uh, you know, try and preserve this house and um, bring that property up to current use. Um, mm -hmm. then, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly <clears throat> why there would be so much resistance besides just, but laws are laws. Yep. So. Okay. Well, know, thank you we so much for joining board. us, Cyrus. You're welcome. Um, and we'll be in touch soon. Okay. Sounds good. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Okay. CPA application projects update the sign. I was given direction on what application we need to fill out from the building commissioner's office. Um, they told me to have the company that's fabricating the signs fill out the application, but I don't want to pay anybody any money until I know for certain I can put these signs up. So I will work on that application and ask for help as needed. I mean, at this point, we can't install them until the spring anyways. So, um, I will set a deadline for myself by the next meeting that I hopefully have that filled out and submitted. Any questions about the sign? Okay. Walking tour. All right. I have submitted another form. Try to get Margaret Atwood's approval to put her poem in our walking tour. Um, I don't remember the company. I've submitted like three different ones at this point, but, um, Izzy, the assistant's assistant, said she might actually be able to help on their end. But the last email I sent her, I got an automatic reply that said she was on holiday. So hopefully we'll hear back soon. Uh, Courtney, do you have any updates on the walking tour? No, never heard from Holly Hobby. And, not, and no other updates. All right, thank you. The audio driving tour, I have confirmation from Alex that they are starting to work on this. Woohoo! All right, any questions about any of those projects? Okay. New business. So I sent around a letter that the commission received um, apparently back in February. Uh, I'm very sorry to the sender that I only got this letter now. We have a mailbox at Town Hall, which is usually full of junk mail um, and occasionally something legitimate. And so uh, we were lax on picking up our mail. So I am sorry about that. Um, so I have a whole response here that I would like to publicly provide to this letter. Uh, did everybody here have a chance to read it or at least skim it? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So um, I will just say the letter was sent anonymously and I can understand that anonymity can be really helpful, but uh, truly the best way for how we work best is if somebody emails us or gives us a phone call. That way we can address, 
address the issue directly and hopefully quickly come to a solution. Uh, I really appreciate the passion that is in this letter and there's clear dedication to historic preservation by the writer. And uh, the letter points out that currently Hadley does not have any bylaws that would stop a privately owned building from being demolished. West Street does fall within a national historic district, but that, which is also pointed out in the letter, is mainly a symbolic designation and does not hold a significant sway in historic preservation. I do know when they took down Hooker School, there did have to be a whole process of documenting the building. Um, but ultimately, we didn't have any laws in place to stop that from happening. Uh, the writer of the letter mentioned the West Street walking tour a couple times. So just to provide some clarification on that, the tour was originally written in 1987 and then updated in 2012. We had a commission member who was interested in updating it again. And I will say that one commission member did probably 90% of the work. Uh, we concluded that it was not a waste of resources and the walking tour at this point is close to publication as we bring it up at every meeting. I think we are hoping for getting that done in the spring. Um, if you've been following our minutes, you know that right now we are trying to get permission from two different authors to include excerpts of their work that directly rates, relates to Hadley and West Street itself. And ultimately the walking tour provides a really good documentation of West Street and its changing landscape. Uh, Hooker School is brought up, and uh, I would agree that it is incredibly regretful that Hooker School was demolished and the current building that says there was approved in its design. Uh, none of us who currently sit on the commission were members of the commission at the time of those decisions. But that being said, um, it is a responsibility of, I think, really everyone in town to work towards preserving our collective history. I will also say, I think we have members on the commission who didn't even live in town at the time of those decisions. So just put that on the record. Local historic districts. So in 2021, the Hadley Historical Commission did a tremendous amount of research on local historic districts. These are designated areas and towns that have stricter building codes with a focus on historic preservation. They are a stepping stone to becoming a certified local government at the state level, which also opens the town up to potential grant opportunities. In April 2021, we approached the select board about starting a study committee to ultimately create a local historic district. Unfortunately, a lot of misinformation was shared at that meeting, and ultimately the select board turned it down. At the time, we were focusing on the center of town, which included Russell School, which was a major sticking point for some members of the select board. We also have documentation that previous historic commissions looked into local historic districts as early as the 1990s. Demolition delay bylaw. So, as you know, we are now looking into demolition delay bylaw and we have a team researching options and hopefully we will have a proposal for the bylaws committee in the select board soon. In the past, the select board approached us about drafting other bylaws and particularly a bylaw about the use of metal detectors on public land. We did our due diligence and submitted a draft. Unfortunately, at this time, that draft never went anywhere and we did try repeatedly to learn more. As it currently stands, the Hadley Historical Commission is set up to be a recommending body. As our purpose states right now, we hold really no power. As far as I am personally aware, there are currently no bylaws that give the commission the final say on any matter. We make recommendations to other relevant town committees and boards. There are state and federal laws that require other bodies to come to us for recommendations and approvals. But if we wanted to stop a project from happening, additional authority would be needed. There is a history of the select board in particular not necessarily welcoming our feedback. So it is rather disheartening to continuously run up against that. CPA and historic preservation restrictions. I am not familiar with the requirement of historic, preserv historic preservation restrictions on projects that receive CPA funding. It is referenced in the letter that this has happened in the past. So um, big examples could be helpful so we can learn more and educate ourselves further on that topic. And to the writer of the letter, I just want to thank you so much for submitting your concerns. And again, if you want to talk further, a phone call and an email is the best way to reach us. Uh, ultimately, there's always more that can be done. And we have to remember that we are just one body and change happens via public opinion and two thirds majority town meeting vote. And I open the floor to any other comments and discussions. 
are you is this going to be published in the town uh, just some kind of a response to this letter public um i mean this meeting will be publicly posted and the minutes will be publicly posted as far as i'm concerned that is enough because the letter was sent anonymously if i had if i knew who the sender was i would definitely reach out to them personally and make sure um <clears throat> they had this response in full. Well, the person certainly seems to be reading the minutes of the meeting, so he or she probably will mm -hmm. get this response. I hope so. And I hope a, a dialogue can be opened. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that I um, made adjustments to the walking tour after they started um, renovating um, because some of the architectural details were removed. Um, and so I removed that from the walking tour. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree that I think it's too bad that some of those features were removed, but excuse me, ultimately, I think they've done a really good job at um, overall preserving the look of the building. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the house could have come down completely and it could, so we could have had something completely different in its place. It was a big mess before. It did need a lot of work. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other comments about the letter we received? Well, I guess just being a homeowner on West Street and having just gutted my home <laughs> and renovated it completely from the inside, uh, I wouldn't like to get, you know, hear of a letter like this complaining about my house. And mm -hmm. um, I certainly took every measure that I could to retain the um, historical sort of farmhouse and architectural look and feel, mm -hmm. even though I had to modernize it because it was a mess and I wasn't going to move in here <laughs> in the condition that it was in. And I suspect mm -hmm. the people who own 137, um, you know, they, they have a right to do that, right? <laughs> you have to make it livable. And also uh, point out because there was some comment about you know the new energy efficient laws and you know etc that um there's another sort of built-in conflict with the state because the state's giving homeowners who go through the renovation process a lot of um rebates to be energy efficient and take out old windows and put new windows in and get a new heating system and put, you know, um, um, spray foam insulation all around the house. So, you know, at the same time, the, the watchword in, from, you know, building wise is to, you know, become climate friendly and energy efficient. And we touched on this a little bit before when you talked about um, public opinion in terms of the demolition delay bylaw, that it will take a really good sales pitch, especially when it comes to private property and privately owned homes, uh, because there's both sides to that, of course. And um, we have seen evidence that people in town do not like being told what to do. So we need to make it, need to make our, sure our sales pitch includes the fact that this is for the good of everybody. And, um, but you bring up good points about um, modernizing and becoming more energy efficient and, um, how do we toe that line and how do we find a good happy medium? Mm -hmm. So right, in I terms mean, of checking the mailbox, um, I know you don't currently, you're not currently in Hadley frequently. Um, should somebody else be checking that? Um, I'm happy to, if that's helpful. Yeah. Okay. I, we had... I, I, Talked about Sherry doing that. it. Yeah. So um, if, if you can split the job, that'd be great. Yeah. Now, my question is, like, if I, I didn't go through that because I didn't know if I should or not, but should I look for something like that when I pick the mail up in the future? Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Um, I mean, this was a very nondescript envelope. I think that was on purpose, like lock lettering mm -hmm. address, no return address. Um, I mean, nowadays things get sent out, everybody, everything gets sent out to Hartford. So again, like I can't even pinpoint 
if somebody yeah. from town sent this. I mean, I assume they did, but I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, because a lot of it, like I went through and I recycled, I think more than half of it. Um, and then like the state sent me these two giant, sent us, I should say, two giant books of like, I guess, like every historic listed property in the state. And I'm just kind of like, okay, I guess I need to file these somewhere, but I'm not sure <laughs> where. Um, and also like, doesn't this exist online? Do I need a hard copy? <laughs> that was another thing that um, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission had e had mailed us some stuff. Um, and so I emailed them. I was like, please, like anything, just like send me an email because I'm sorry, these are from July and I'm just now reading them. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess also we receive some money from the Cultivating Our Past book, which is edit edited by Marla Miller. Um, and so we got a letter that from UMass Press saying like, oh, you earned $3 this past year. When you earn $20, we'll send you a check. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we want to email this information to you in the future. So I did fill out that form. So hopefully we'll get that by email in the future. And maybe someday we'll make $20. <laughs> um, so when I go there, how do I, um, do I need a key? Do I check in with somebody? Um, you just have to go when the building's open. And okay. um, is mailbox on the first floor, Sherry? On the first floor between the, um, the, the, clerk's office and the, and the office where you pay your bills. It's not high security. Okay. No, it's not high security. In fact, I did the letter that I, the first letter on top wasn't even to us. It was to um, the DPW head. So I brought it into the clerk's office and said, this was in our mail. Um, but I didn't go through looking to see if there was anything else that wasn't ours. It all yeah. appeared to be ours. So just yeah. that one error. You just, anybody could just walk in and take the stuff out of that box yeah. at any time. There's no. Maybe we should advertise that. <laughs> <laughs> Give someone an idea. Um, $3. <laughs> no, we didn't even get our $3. Get out of it. Okay. Um, final thoughts, anybody? Okay, under any other new business, I just put down, did we all submit that we had received and read the handbook? I think I forwarded that to everybody a couple months ago. Seeing some nods. Okay. Okay. I read it, but I don't, we have to sign it and send it in, don't we? Yeah. I got confused. I was trying to digitally sign it and it wouldn't go. So I have to, Yeah. I think I have to print it, sign it and mail it in. Town hall is not super high tech. No, I guess not. <laughs> I would. Or you can just drop it off too, if that's easier. Yeah. No, I don't I, remember I, I, if I, I did it or not. Will she tell you if we didn't do it? Because I don't remember if I did. I remember. Like a week or so ago, she just sent a blanket email to everybody reminding us. Mm -hmm. So that's what made me think of it. I could ask her for specifications if you'd like. It's in one of your previous emails. I'll go back through and check and see. From a while ago, I feel as though, like, beginning of the summer, I maybe sent that around. Maybe, yeah, June or July. Oh, I think I did it then. I think I brought it to the office. Good. All right. Has anything else come up in the past week since we posted the agenda? Hearing nothing. Uh, our next meeting would be at the end of January. Um, I wrote down that the 23rd or the 30th would work for me, but the 30th is more ideal. Uh, January is funky. This time around, there's five Tuesdays. You know what? I, I do have one more thing. Um, and I don't know if you, you guys already know about this, but in the Mass Historical Commission, the, there's a um, application process for fiscal year 2024 for grants. Mm -hmm. Are you aware? Or is everybody aware of that? And it looks like we missed the deadline, which was November 15th, 
to send in a pre-application letter. I don't know if we can catch up because then the invitations for full application are December 13th. So it's still a couple ways away. And I think I, I did look at this and I thought we didn't qualify. Um, I mean, right now our, we are three projects. We do have funding from CPA. So um, perhaps at this time, we should think about if we have a project for the next cycle. Um, Which would be next year, 2025. Yeah. Um, because I mean, I think you just said the final deadline was in like two weeks or three weeks. Um, I think that's at this point too quick of a turnaround for us to figure out. Well, if, what we, would if we could get a letter in and accepted, the full application would be February 5th. And the eligible activities are to have somebody help us with um, inventorying the our cultural resources, if unless that's already been done. Um, then they help nominate significant properties to the National Register of Historic Places. They help you with a community-wide preservation plan. And uh, I guess uh, updating some of the other town reports. The last one they did was in the 80s for Hadley. So it's pretty outdated. Okay, I'll send I, this to you. I'll send okay, this. Thank you. Um, I, like I said, I think at this point, I don't think we have our act together, and I don't think we will have our act together even by February 5th, um, unless we have somebody who is going to dedicate their time to come up with a full application for this, uh, which is why I think we should put our energies towards trying to complete the projects we have right now, and we can consider this for next year. And to have a firm project in mind for it yeah. um, when we do it so that we you know, have it all planned out. Mm -hmm. Certainly the last one you mentioned, Irene, about getting someone to help you um, put things into items into an historic district that need to be there mm -hmm. would be something worth pursuing in light it of the letters. Great. We, have, we have very few things even listed. <laughs> in the, the MACRIS um, database. Well, thank you for letting us know about that, Irene. Sure, no problem. Okay, so what date in January works well for people for our next meeting? I can do I, either. I can't do the 30th. Uh, are we over the 23rd then? I have no idea if I'll even be in Massachusetts on the 23rd. So okay. I can't, I can't promise anything. I may be in South Bend, Indiana. Well, four of us is a quorum. Yeah. So I'm, just, I'm sorry. And I can try and do it with, Yeah. All right, so the 23rd, yes? And I can tr I'll try and do it by phone if I'm not here in Hadley. Okay. All right, January 23rd. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. We've come to the end of the agenda. Thank you so much for your work on all of these topics. And I hope everybody has a good holiday season. Thank you.